Hey, what is going on guys? Extra Fusion here and today I want to make a video where I kind of focus on three essential questions about The Walking Dead. And these questions have been on my mind for a while, the past few months or even probably past few years because of the state that The Walking Dead is in right now. It's been probably the most divided fandom out of any TV show I've ever enjoyed and been a part of ever and that has a lot to do with the fact that it's just a very popular show therefore there's more people watching therefore there's more people who either will love or hate it so therefore more division the more popular something is the more division there will be about it just like star wars very divided call of duty very divided the most popular sort of franchises around the world always get this kind of division and i kind of wanted to talk about that i kind of wanted to talk about why people are losing interest in the show why people hated season 7 and 8, and why people just hate Scott Gimple as a writer. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying this is my opinion, okay? I understand that other people have their own opinions and that they're just opinions, and that's all they are. But that's not my point of this video. I'm not trying to, you know, say someone's a horrible and stupid person just because they have a different opinion than me. What I'm trying to say is... It's just argue my side of the, the coin, right? Argue what I believe about these different questions and why I believe um, people are kind of misinformed on certain things and also just kind of misinterpret what happens in seasons. Now, if you don't enjoy season seven and eight, you're just not interested in them, that's fine. But when people say that the seasons were just plain bad, and they say they were badly written, they say the character development was bad, and they say all these other things. They say Scott Kimball's a bad writer. I just sit there and I go, no, I can't. I can't just let somebody say that without me intervening. That's why if you are following me on Twitter, which I strongly advise you do, I get into a shitload of arguments with people. A shit ton. On YouTube comment sections, I get in arguments. I get in arguments with everybody about this show. Because whenever I see somebody, not just who has a different opinion, if they have a different opinion, that's fine. But when they kind of kind of bring it to the extreme, and everyone nowadays is about the extreme. Everyone wants to say something a lot worse than what it really is. For example, they don't enjoy a game. They're not very good at it. It's just not their kind of game. You know what they say? They say the game's trash. That is not a proper way of I expressing how you feel about something. Like Destiny. I'm not a big fan of the game Destiny. Doesn't mean it's a bad game. Doesn't mean I think it's a bad game. It's just... I personally don't enjoy that type of gameplay. I personally don't enjoy that type of thing. I don't really enjoy uh, certain types of TV shows like Game of Thrones. I'm not a fan of Game of Thrones. I've never been a fan of Game of Thrones. I've tried watching it, and I just don't think it's that interesting. For me personally, does that make it a bad show? No, not in the slightest. So just because you lost interest in Season 7 or Season 8 of The Walking Dead does not mean it's a bad show or does not mean those seasons are bad. It just means that... What was going on in those seasons doesn't doesn't gripe you. It doesn't it doesn't pull you in. Now people actually do give actual reasons as to why they think it's bad, and those are kind of the reasons I'm talking about now. If you just say you lost interest, who cares? You know that that's that's you. That's your opinion. But if you lose interest, don't say it's bad. If you actually think and you have actual reasons to back up why you think something's bad, then you have a reasonable argument. Like for example, the Last Jedi. Last Jedi, I think, is actually a bad movie. I'm going to be honest. I enjoyed it entertainment-wise. It was an entertaining movie. I still love Star Wars. I think it's a great franchise. But I think in terms of writing, character development, and overall story, it was just a bad movie. That's my opinion, though. People can have different opinions. It's not that I was uninterested in it. There's nothing to do with it. It was just the fact that it was objectively, and a lot of people agree with me, a not really well-done movie in many situations, in many different forms. So... Let's get into this. So first of all, I gotta explain lower viewership because it's very misleading. Very misleading. You have media sites saying The Walking Dead is at its lowest point ever. They have saying that it's dropped like 70% and stuff like that. They really like to over-exaggerate, but the viewers that you see, for example, on, I'm, uh, on Wikipedia, which is probably the place everyone goes to see the viewership of The Walking Dead, if you look through those numbers, which are obviously millions, are not viewers overall. They're just U.S. viewers who watch it live on AMC. So people who are in the United States watching on AMC, on cable, and are watching it live when it first came out. 
people watch the show in many different locations than that. First of all, you have people in other countries, which can make up a big proportion of the, pe the people who watch the show. I know a lot of people from Europe who absolutely love The Walking Dead. It's a big show there, it's, but it plays on Fox. It doesn't play on AMC. So they're not taking that into account. There's also people who wait for it to come out on Netflix. There's a lot of people who do that. Trust me. You'd be surprised. I know it comes out a lot further on Netflix, like in September, but you'd be surprised. A lot of people do it. People watch it on demand afterwards. They watch it on AMC.com. They watch it in so, so many different places because people just don't watch live TV anymore for a number of reasons. People don't like commercials. People just are getting sick and tired of it. They just want to watch Netflix where it's just completely you know, easier to access. Some people just don't have cable, you know, stuff like that. People got, a lot of people are getting rid of cable as of recently. You know, so the viewers going down, they haven't really dropped that insane, insanely compared to what people are saying. Um, if you take into account everything, not just U.S. viewers millions, it still is sort of down just by a little bit. But the reason why that makes sense is because any show that lasts more than a, like six or seven seasons is bound to have their ups and downs. They're bound to have it. I guarantee you The Walking Dead is going to go up at some point than what it is right now and I don't know how much but it's definitely going to rise um, I think probably next season I think it's going to rise a little bit but is it going to rise a lot I don't know you know it could it could might it might not but that doesn't mean it's going to get cancelled just because it's at the lowest point ever according to all these media people okay now let's get into the actual arguments that people like to make and now this is arguments that I've seen on Twitter YouTube Facebook Instagram everywhere. I've seen these arguments everywhere. And I want to kind of discuss them and give me give you guys a, my defense, what I believe uh, people might be wrong about or people might be misinterpreting certain things. So, let's get into it. So, first of all, let's talk about why people think season 7 and 8 were bad because you hear this a lot. You you hear people saying The Walking Dead from seasons 1 to 6 were incredible, but then after that it was just trash. Now, a lot of those people haven't seen season 9, but, you know, that's another story. Seasons 7 and 8, in my opinion, are controversial for a variety of reasons. Personally, I think season 7 is one of my least favorites, but that does not make it a bad season. I just think it's a very, very good setup and character development, and it's much needed development for the war in season 8. Which, season 8, I still to this day think it's one of my favorite seasons, probably my third favorite season, uh, right behind season six and season nine, which is we haven't even seen all of season nine. And I'm already loving it more than most seasons out there. So I don't know, but season eight would probably be in third. I think there was a lot of good things about it. Yes, there were some bad things here and there, and I'm gonna discuss that in this video. Let me get to that. Obviously, I want to talk about season seven first. So season seven was polarizing for a variety of reasons. The main arguments people had was nothing happening. Now. And the pacings. Nothing happening in the pacing. Now, what I don't get is how people can say that, but then they can still love Season 2. Because Season 2 was easily the slowest season. And the reason why you have to take into account more things than just the pacing is because when you have a, a shitload of characters on a show compared to just 10, which was in Season 2, you had like 10 characters, something like that, a couple more maybe, you have over 40 characters in Season 7. Season 7 introduced the Kingdom, introduced Oceanside, introduced the Sanctuary and the Saviors, introduced the, the Trash People. So many different groups being introduced that you have to slow it down. You can't just continue on and move through everything without introducing communities and introducing characters. Because if you don't do that, then people will not care about the characters. And then when it comes to time for them to die or for something big to happen with them, no one will care because they weren't developed enough. They weren't shown off enough. So pacing, in my opinion, was perfect. I wouldn't. I don't have anything to change. I really don't. Episode one, don't even have to change anything about episode one. Episode two and three are introducing communities. Yeah, episode three could have done a little bit of a better job in terms. Of, I'm only talking about pacing here. I'm not talking about you know content itself. Um, this is just pacing. Episode three it was introduced in the sanctuary. They did more of an introduction to the sanctuary in episode seven, but you get the idea. Four was must needed. Five, I was think it's the only episode that could have been shortened, but yet again, it was some good development for Maggie and uh, the overall Hilltop community. Six, people hated that episode. It was a terror episode. Was called Swear. I liked it. 
I thought Oceanside being introduced was important. Now, Oceanside probably should have played a bigger role in Season 8. Unfortunately, they didn't play that big of a role. That is one of my negatives with Season 8. But you still introduce the community. And then now they're playing a pretty big role. In, at least they did in the beginning of Season 9. So I think it was important to really introduce them and show off who these people are and what they have to you know offer to the show. 7, and 8, 9, 10, I think no one really complained about those episodes in terms of pacing. 11, yeah, it was slow. 12, yeah, it was slow. But it was character development driven. It was character heavy. That's what it was meant to be. Then you have 13, which is almost a masterpiece. 14, 15, yeah, a little slow at some times, but was still necessary for the characters like I was saying. And then 16 was just a very all-round good episode that started the war. People said the war should have started like the mid-season finale, season 7. Like, no, I liked how they did it. They made the first half of season 7 this depressing, like everyone's, you know, down and out because Glenn and Abraham were killed and Negan's under control and it's like this is the new world that they had to live in. And then mid-season finale hits, they all realize we gotta fight back. And the second half of season 7 comes and boom, it's it's the rising up. Now, they have to prepare for war. They have to get weapons. They have to get people. They need to be able to fight against this, these people in a sufficient way. They can't just rush into it. I hate when stories rush into things. I do. That's one of my problems I have with Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, which season was it? One of the seasons. Fear the Walking Dead rushed the hell out of some stories. And I don't like when you know stories do that. Um, not for everything. Not the whole show I'm talking about. Just certain portions of Fear the Walking Dead kind of rushed things a little bit too much. In my opinion. Sometimes you have to just let things play out and, and kind of draw it out a little bit. Now, I'm not saying do that you know, to the extreme to where it's just getting boring, but do it to the point where it kind of gives you some breathing room. And then season 8 hit, and people said that season had bad pacing. I'm sitting there like, what? Were you watching the same season? Episodes 1 to 5 were just complete war. That was action-packed. People were like, oh, where was the all-out war? I thought we were having... Did you watch the first five episodes or were you just not even paying attention or something? Those were some of the most exciting, one of the most exciting five episodes of the entirety of The Walking Dead in my opinion. Could have been better? Yes, in certain ways, yes. But that doesn't mean it was awful, terrible, and, and bad writing. Oh, Scott Gimple, you're a horrible human being. Oh, whatever. Episode six and seven, not a big fan of them, but eight and nine were amazing. And then you go into the second half of season eight, which I think everyone can agree if you don't like season 8, certain parts of it, that's fine. But the second half of season 8 was muy buen. Muy buen. That was a beautiful second half of the season. It didn't end the exact way I wanted it to, but just because the season doesn't end the way I want it to does not mean it's bad. That's just, I hate when people say that. Like, Star Wars Episode 8. As much as I said I didn't like it, I don't hate it just because it didn't do what I wanted. That's what a lot of people say. They're like, oh, I hate Episode 8 because... It didn't, it didn't do exactly what I wanted. It didn't have Luke do this and Ray do this. That's not why I didn't like it. I mean, you might be mad at that because you might have wanted something to happen. Yeah, I guess. But that's not a good reason to say something's bad just because it didn't go the exact way you wanted it to happen. Also, another thing people didn't like about Season 7 was... Or, Season 7 and 8, I guess we can talk about, is the action scenes. The, the, the choreography, the, the, the camera work, stuff like that. I can partially agree with that, but not in full force, because, let me explain. The Walking Dead has always, because The Walking Dead has always kind of been, obviously, TV show quality. For a TV show, it's really good, though, in terms of the action scenes and the CGI. Pretty damn good, for the most part, at most times. So, you know, when you think of it as a TV, as a TV show, it's like, okay, that's actually pretty damn good. If it was a movie, it would be kind of bad quality. But as a TV show, I think it's pretty good. Uh, one thing I do complain about a lot is the grainy camera they do. They put it a little too much. It's a little too grainy and, and gray at times and kind of like hard to see in dark scenes. But if you're watching on a really HD TV, it's actually not that bad. But that's only if you're watching on a really nice TV. If you're not watching a nice TV, it's unfortunately not the best quality. Sometimes. I'm talking about sometimes. Other times it looks beautiful and it's like the best looking show of all time. Now, that's one thing Season 9 has improved greatly upon is camera work, choreography, and action scenes. They've done a great job. I don't know why people are saying that's Angela Kang's, you know, that's why we should praise Angela Kang because the camera works better. No, that has nothing to do with Angela Kang. She's a showrunner, but she's she's a, she's working on the story and the writing, not how the camera work is. But, okay, I guess we can praise Angela Kang for everything just because she's a woman. Why not? Um, no, 
that's kind of a joke, but you get the idea. Um, in some cases, I do believe that, yes, they did some bad camera work in season 7 and 8. They had some moments where it was like, really? Like, that wasn't good. And For example, the car chase in episode 4 of season 8, it was just, I don't know, it just wasn't shot well. Um, episode 1 of season 8, people you know, would say the whole thing like, oh, oh, Rick shot at Negan. Now, this is not a thing I would complain about and call a show bad for. I think it's just they didn't show off everything. They probably could have showed a little bit better. Rick was shooting from a far distance with an SMG. Chances are you're not going to hit somebody. Now, could they have made it a little more clear? Yes. But then you have some really well-done episodes, like episode 2 of season 8, where the camera work was on point. The action was on point. Everything about it was on point. I did not have one moment where I was like, that man should have been dead, but he wasn't. I didn't have any of those moments in that episode. Episode 13 of season 8. Very well shot. Very well choreographed. Uh, choreographed. See, episode 12, too. Very well done. A lot of them were well done. But then you had a few here and there where it was like, yeah, you know, you could have done better. You could have made it a little bit better of an action scene. Even the finale, I wasn't a big fan of how they, how they shot some of the sequences. But... That doesn't mean it's trash. That doesn't mean the it's a, the writer's fault. It's just, I don't know. You know, I'm really happy that season 9 has kind of made a lot of the camera work and stuff like that better. I'm really glad. But I don't think that has anything to do with Angela Kang being showrunner. Some people say Angela Kang saved the show in all cases, in all situations. I don't know if I agree with that. But let's get into the most important thing I want to discuss. And that is the killing off of characters. Now... Season 7 and 8 really didn't kill off that many characters when you think about it. People try to act like they kill off way too many. They didn't. They killed off Glenn Abraham. In terms of main characters, Glenn Abraham, Sasha, I'm not going to count Spencer or Olivia. They're not only main characters. Sasha and then Carl. That's really all I can think of, honestly, in terms of main characters. You had some side characters here and there, yeah. But in terms of main characters, that's really it. Glenn and Abraham's deaths were ne necessary, both of them. I firmly believe that. A lot of the story that happened afterwards was very important because of those deaths. Now, people who stopped watching because of that, I'm sorry. You have to understand what this show is. It's The Walking Dead. Nobody is safe. People die. That's how the show works. That's part of the world they live in. So if you're going to have some kind of a hissy fit because a character died, then I'm sorry. This is not the show for you. Now, yes, I agree. You shouldn't just kill characters off if it has no emotional impact, if there's no reason for it. If it's like, if the character has more story and it's like, you shouldn't just do it in some random ass way. And the way they kill the characters is also really important. But Glenn and Abraham's death greatly impacted the story. And in my opinion, I didn't think they had any more story left. So killing them off was necessary. Sasha too, I didn't really, I mean, I'm pretty sure Sasha, the act, actress, wanted to leave actually. But either way, the death worked. Um, to me, it was impactful enough to the point where it was necessary, and it made for a pretty damn good Season 7 finale. Then you have Carl, the most controversial one of there. Now, I need to explain why I believe Carl was killed off, because they never really made clear as to why they did it. The reason that Scott Gimple claims is because of the fact that he needed a reason for Rick to keep Negan alive, and he thought the only way that was possible was to have an impactful death like Carl. I kind of agree with him on that. I kind of do. Yes, you could have probably switched it with Morgan. You probably could have had Morgan do it, and you could have had Morgan die, and you could have had it be more impactful in terms of that. But being his son made it what made it so important. If it was just Morgan who said it, he'd be like, all right, Morgan, I understand what you're going through. but And, I, and Morgan was crazy too. Don't forget, Morgan was in crazy state of mind throughout the entirety of season six and eight, seven. So you mean to tell me you think Rick's going to go along with what a crazy man says? No, he's not going to. So as much as they could have made it work, no. Carl worked better in my opinion. But I don't think that's the only reason they killed him off. I think they had a couple other reasons. They knew Andrew Lincoln was leaving. They knew that since like season six, I think, something like that. Andrew Lincoln wanted to leave for a while, and then he made the decision he was going to leave at the finale of season eight. Now, they made a deal where he would stay for five more episodes of season nine just to finish the story off in a better position, and that was, you know, cool and all. But I think they realized that people are going to look at Chandler Riggs, who plays Carl, as the lead after Rick dies. Whether or not they make him the lead doesn't matter. People are going to look to Chandler as the lead. They've been saying that all the time. They've been wanting him to pass the torch on to Carl for a while. And 
I don't think they wanted that. Now, look, Gimple, whether or not you like that decision or you think it's fair to Chandler or whatever, think of it from just an overall perspective of the show rather than thinking of it as a compassion towards Chandler. Look, I understand he's a real person, but he's doing just fine out there. I don't think he cares that. I mean, he did it at the time, and I, his dad did as well, but obviously his dad's going to care. His dad, he was making millions. Of course he's going to want him to be still on the show so we can keep making millions. I'm sure he's not making that much on this new show. Um, but people are taking the word of Chandler Rigg's father as like gospel or something. It's like, oh, Scott Gimple's this evil man. Look, whether or not you think he's an evil man, that doesn't matter if his actual writing is good. Okay, obviously you could you could have his, your opinions on him as a person, but that shouldn't conflict with his craft. And his craft is obviously the show. Well, part of the show, not the whole show, obviously. And people act like it was just Gimple and stuff like that. But no, the writers all kind of sit collectively in a room when they discuss these things. And they come up with decisions together. Skimple, Gimple just doesn't go, I'm killing off Carl and none of you can do anything about it. No, he didn't do that. I'm sure he consoled with everyone, making sure they believed it worked. And he wouldn't just go through with the decision. Just like the presidency of the United States. He can't do whatever the hell he wants. He can't just go in and just be like, oh, I'm passing a law. No, you have to get it accepted by Congress you have to have, you know, people on your side. You can't just do whatever they want. Even if you have the most power in your position, you still can't. And even then, I don't think Scott Gimple has the most power. Because AMC definitely has more power than Scott Gimple does. In terms of budget, in terms of decisions with um, story, I believe AMC has the power there. They do. They can tell them whatever the hell they want. And if they don't do it, they can just cancel The Walking Dead. So, technically, Scott Gimple does not have the most power. Or, or the showrunner, I guess. Um, now Scott Gimple, of course, is chief executive. People say he just left the show. He didn't leave the show. He's not fired. Nothing of that happened. He became chief executive of the entire Walking Dead universe. So that includes The Walking Dead. That includes Free the Walking Dead. Yes, he's not a showrunner, so he's not making all the different calls that he was making previously. But he is still working on episodes. He's still writing episodes. He's still working on certain um, portions of the franchise. He's writing the movies now, which is awesome. Okay, I mean, let me let me let me take a breather now because I'm just going off right now, and I understand you guys probably don't want to sit here for a year watching me rant, but let me get my point across. Scott Gimple killed Carl off because Andrew Lincoln was leaving, and because he thought that he couldn't handle the show. He doesn't think Chandler has that good of acting. You know, let me preface that. You know, everyone keeps saying Scott Gimple killed Carl. He didn't kill Carl. Him and the other writers wrote Carl off the show, I think that's a better way to put it, because they act like he murdered somebody, I don't know, it's, they, they go a little extreme with that type of shit sometimes. I think also a reason for them killing off Carl was the time skip, they knew they were going to do a time skip, and they realized, we Carl's been around since season one, and his age going from season, or the time skip from six for six years, is not going to look right at all, it's going to look really weird. Now, Enid is the only character that's like similar to Carl's age that they didn't have to recast, because anyone younger than Carl, they recasted. Anyone older, they just kind of changed their hairstyle. They made it look what right. Enid is a little bit older than Chandler Riggs, I'm pretty sure. And But they still made it work. Um, but she hasn't been here as long as Carl, so that kind of makes more sense. You know, if she was here since the beginning, it'd probably be easier to tell that she didn't age. But they did a good job with Enid. She actually does look a lot older, surprisingly, which is really strange. I don't know how they did it, but they, they made her look a lot older. Like, I'm talking like... Six years older, which is exactly how long the time skip was, of course. So, that's awesome. Now, let's get into Scott Gimple as a writer, because people say stuff like Scott Gimple's the worst writer in the world, he's a terrible writer, just because they didn't like the seasons that he wrote. I'm sitting here like, what? Okay, first of all, you might just not like certain things about those seasons. That doesn't mean it's, he's a bad writer. Let's take a look at the episodes Gimple has written in The Walking Dead, because he's written a lot of stellar episodes and I always bring this argument up because if you were going to call a dude a bad writer but then you look at the episodes he wrote and you, you go and say that those episodes he wrote are like your favorite episodes in the series then you're just a goddamn hypocrite let's look okay so first of all season 2 arguably the three best episodes in season 2 other than the last two episodes probably the other you know episode 3, 7, and 10 I'll just put it there some of the best episodes of that season. He wrote all three of those. He wrote Clear, amazing episode. This Sorrow for Life, the one where Merle died, amazing episode. He wrote 
Um, the one when Carol killed Lizzie and Mika, or well, not Lizzie and Mika, the one when Carol killed Lizzie after Lizzie killed Mika. He wrote that one, The Grove, beautiful episode, everyone loves it, one of the best of the series, Gimple wrote it. The season six, uh, season four finale, the one when Carl almost got raped and then they found the, the place, Gimple wrote that, No Sanctuary, one of the best episodes in the series, Gimple wrote that. What Happened, What's Going On, which was the one Tyrese died. Very, very awesome episode. It was not very, you know, intense or action-packed, but in terms of writing, it was really well done. Uh, the season 5 finale, season 6 premiere, all good. Here's Not Here, one of the best written episodes. It might not be the most entertaining, but definitely one of the most best best written. Um, Last Day on Earth, season 6 finale. Whether or not you liked him doing the cliffhanger, you gotta admit that was a fucking amazing episode. And then he writ- wrote the season seven premiere, which is easily the third best episode in the series, in my opinion. Uh, last episode of season eight, good episode. Last episode of season seven, good episode. And then if you are a big fan of season nine, and it's so funny because I, I asked the dude, I'm like, "What's your favorite episode?" He's like, uh, "The one when Rick's Ra- Ra- final episode, right?" And then he says Scott Gibble's a shit writer directly after that. He wrote that last episode. He wrote Rick's last episode. And if you look at Fear the Walking Dead, he's only wrote and written one episode of Fear the Walking Dead. But in my opinion, the episode he wrote was one of the best episodes in the entire series, which is the season four premiere. I fucking loved that episode to death. So sitting here and saying Scott Gibble's a bad writer, just because you might have not enjoyed the seasons he wrote, which, like I said, I don't understand why people hated those seasons as much as they did it's just bullshit and a half and before i finish the video i just want to go over one more thing that people had problems with in terms of season seven and eight and that was character inconsistency now i had a whole long argument with some dude who sounded pretty intelligent on youtube and i made a really good um sort of response to it but he sounded intelligent, like he sounded like he knew what he was talking about in terms of writing, but it sounds like he misinterprets a lot that The Walking Dead does, and that's kind of the problem. Now, sometimes The Walking Dead is not very clear at certain things they like to do, but that's, that's like a thing writers do all the time. They're not clear about things because they want it to be show, don't tell. That's a very preschool type term that we've been hearing for a long time, and it's very clear that Walking Dead loves to do that. They don't like to just shoehorn you information. They like to kind of piece make the fans kind of piece things together just like breaking bad did vince gill vince gilligan did with breaking bad so first of all people had a problem with morgan's character overall they said his character was very inconsistent one second he was killing people and the next second he was trying to save every life and i sit there and i go well yeah that's the whole point of his character he is clearly bipolar now people say no normal person would do that no normal person would do this no normal per-. i'm like well, yeah, he's not normal. That's that's kind of the point. Like people say that for everyone. They say Eugene, no normal person talks like Eugene. Well, yeah, Eugene's not very normal, dude. He's kind of weird. There people like that exist. Not everyone is your average Joe that just is talks normal, acts normal, and and does things like a normal human being. Not everyone is like that. The world has crazy people in it. You're they're gonna exist. Morgan is bipolar as fuck. He either is extremely trying to kill everyone in his in his path, or he's trying to conserve life. And the things that make him tr- change are there. It's not like he just changes randomly. He has things that kind of hit him on the head and makes him realize, oh, I sh- I should you know rethink the way I'm doing things. And that's why I love Morgan Car- Morgan's character so much. And on fear, I don't know if he's that interesting on fear personally. Um, just because he's kind of like more of like a leader rather than um, kind of he hasn't really had much development on fear even though he's been there for a whole season. I think we'll get into some more development with him in season five though, of course. So I'm pretty excited for that. Then we have Daryl. People complain about Daryl in season seven and eight. They say he's so much better in season nine because he actually talks. I'm sitting here like, bro. Of course he's not going to be talking every two seconds because they're in the middle of a war. Season eight was a war. People say the dialogue was bad in season eight. They didn't talk enough. I'm sitting here like, okay, first of all. Season 7, people complain because there was too much talking. There was not enough action. Season 8 comes around, you're complaining there's too much action, not enough talking. Like, what the fuck do you want from the show? Just like people used to complain that the AMC never killed off anybody, and now they say they're killing off too many people? What? Ah, oh, it's disgusting. Um, Daryl, 
makes sense about everything that he did. People said Daryl going and attacking the sanctuary made no sense. That made so much sense. Daryl, that's who he is. He is not a bystander. He does not like to sit back and let things happen. That's why he punched Negan in the face, because he does not like to just sit there and watch Negan taunt his friends like that. That's who he is. You'd think maybe he'd learn from that, but he didn't. So something had to happen, and that's exactly what went down. So that's just who he is, man. I don't know why people have to act like these characters are, like they know them by heart or something. Like, you don't. Oh, okay. Then we have, of course, the character of Carl, which this is an important one, which I kind of agree in certain aspects that it could have been done better. But people say he was wanted to kill Negan in the beginning of Season 7, and then by Season 8 when he was dying, he wanted to all of a sudden save Negan. Look at what happened in between then. They probably should have showed it off a little bit better, but look what happened. He rolled up to the sanctuary, ready to kill Negan. He failed, and Negan didn't kill him. Negan didn't shoot him. Negan didn't do anything. Negan didn't kill anybody because of Carl going to the sanctuary. He didn't. He had no plan to kill anybody because of that. He showed him around relatively respectfully and saw the people in his community. He, Carl saw that there's innocent people there. There's good people that live in that community, not just the saviors. Then he brings him home, and then obviously he kills people because of other reasons, and that was unfortunate. So, yeah, Carl wasn't a fan of that. But then the next season comes around, and Carl's all of a sudden saying, you know, we shouldn't just kill Negan. We have to find peace. You know, that's something we should do. And people misinterpreted that. They think that Carl was thinking something like, oh, I don't want to kill Negan because he might be a good guy on the inside. That's not what Carl was thinking. Carl was thinking we should find peace because Carl was just not confident in his, his people. I'm going to be honest. It's how, how he was thinking. He was thinking... I don't want my people to die. I don't want anyone to die. I don't want my family to die. So it'd be nice if we could find peace and just stop the fighting. He was finally getting that. He was finally realizing that. He almost faced death at the end of Season 7 because Negan was going to kill him. And he's okay with that. He understands why Negan was going to kill him. He understands that they are a community of people who want to kill them. And they understand that they need to find peace because they can find peace. And there's a way, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to find a way. That's part of Carl. That's who he was. And that's why his death was so impactful and so well done and so well written and why Scott Gimple is an amazing fucking writer. Okay. So I think it worked perfectly. Now, the only character that I completely agree with is just they completely just drop the ball with is Jesus. Now, okay. Th this is why I need to explain this. So Jesus... Is clearly more of a, a guy who likes life. He doesn't like killing. But I don't get it. Episode 2, he literally went up behind enemies, popped them in the head with his suppressed pistol. And then literally in that same episode, nothing happened to change his opinion. Nothing. Some dude almost killed Tara, right? And he keeps that dude alive. But before, he was literally just putting people down like it was nothing. I don't know. I don't know. Jesus just made no sense to me. I don't know. Could they have utilized Jesus better? Yes, I heard that complaint a lot. But sometimes you just don't have time for that type of stuff. Then we get into Season 9. I just want to finish this off with Season 9. Um, most people are enjoying Season 9. The main complaints are the fact that a lot of actors are leaving, like Andrew Lincoln, Lauren Cohen, Denai Greer might be leaving soon. Um, Ezekiel apparently was rumored to be leaving. All those are actor decisions. So the show can't control that. AMC maybe can control that in terms of how much they pay them, but that's about it. It's not the writer's fault. People say, oh, Andrew Lincoln left because they killed off Carl. No, that's not why he left. He never said that. He literally has been here, or been saying that he wanted to leave, or at least he said in an interview that he wanted to leave ever since season four. He was planning it. So, no. It has nothing to do with Carl getting killed off. He just wants to be with his family. Lauren Cohen's coming back. Rick and Michonne are still in the universe. Lauren Cohen, like I said, is coming back. And she just wanted to go because she was going to another show. She wanted to try different things. Denai Guerrero, probably for more money in terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Probably paying her more. Um, and Ezekiel, I have no idea. I haven't heard much about that at all, to be honest. But, um, yeah, so it all makes sense. And they're still in the universe. Rick, Maggie, and Michonne are all still in the universe. Dwight, Morgan, still in the universe. They might not be on the show, but they're still in the universe. So people saying that the show doesn't have enough characters to support itself... 
they're just goddamn wrong. There's so many characters still alive on the show that are great and that can hold the show for a long time. This show can end, in my opinion, like I said in my previous video, they should end it at season 14 in unison with the third Rick Grimes movie. Have the third Rick Grimes movie kind of be like a finale to the entire series. Have Fear the Walking Dead end as well. And then start a brand new spinoff in the Walking Dead universe right after that. And be it making it completely separate from the main universe. Or from the main groups at least. <sighs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section below what you believe and what you agree with me. Do you think season 7 and 8 were awful? What do you not like about them? What do you like about them? Why do you think people stop watching this show? Why do you think people hate the show? Do you think Scott Campbell's a bad writer? I gotta say, I don't know why people think he's a bad writer. I really don't. Just because he was showrunner in the two seasons that you weren't a fan of does not make him a bad writer. He's written some of the best episodes in the show, and I proved that in this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.